the cloud. Okay, um, so in this next section here, uh, what we want to do since, you know, we're spending all week doing all this online learning, um, I want to give you just a, a brief intro on not what to do in the course, but on how to use the course um, so you can actually learn field silviculture. So I'm going to start that off with a little exercise and let me stop share and go online. I had embedded a YouTube video and it worked great until this morning when of course it did not work, but I've got it pulled up here in a browser. So let me set that up and share it with you. So take a mo moment here, folks. We're going to watch a brief uh, two minute. Oh, hold on. Started on me already. We're going to watch a brief two minute video on photosynthesis. Um, and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, and as I share this, let's see. You never know how Zoom is going to work. Let me get the participant window up so I can see. Um, if you all aren't getting audio or if this isn't showing, go ahead and click the red X, the no. Um, and so I'll be watching the participant window. You should be able to find that in your participant window, the red X for no. And that way I'll know that it's not working and we'll come up with plan C. So, so here you go. Watch this brief two minute, two minute, 25 second YouTube video on photosynthesis. In plants, photosynthesis occurs in specialized organelles called chloroplasts. The internal membranes of chloroplasts are organized into sacs called thylakoids. Surrounding the thylakoid membrane system is a semi-liquid substance called stroma. Photosynthetic pigments are clustered together to form photosystems. When a photon of light strikes the reaction center of photosystem 2, it excites an electron. Two water molecules bind to an enzyme at the reaction center. This enzyme splits the water and uses the electrons from the water to replace the electrons removed from the reaction center. Oxygen is produced in this process. The primary electron acceptor for the light energized electrons leaving photosystem 2 is plastoquinone. The reduced plastoquinone passes the excited electrons to a proton pump embedded in the membrane called the B6F complex. Arrival of the energetic electrons causes the B6F complex to pump protons from the stroma into the thylakoid space, thereby generating a proton gradient across the membrane. Because the thylakoid membrane is impermeable to protons, the protons in the stroma must pass through the channels provided by ATP synthase. As protons pass through, ADP is phosphorylated to ATP and released into the stroma. This process for making ATP is referred to as photophosphorylation. When photosystem 1 absorbs a photon of light, its reaction center passes high-energy electrons to ferredoxin. The enzyme NADP reductase then transfers the electrons to NADP to form NADPH. Electrons lost from photosystem 1 are replaced by electrons generated from photosystem 2. A small protein called plastocyanin, PC, then carries the electrons from the B6F complex to photosystem 1. Okay, I think that's it. It's just showing you the, the process a little bit more. So let me stop the share there. It's minimized on my monitor so it doesn't go on to another YouTube video. Okay, um, and so let's see if the polling feature works. So that was a two minute, 20 second video. I've now launched polling and I've got one question for you all. Um, so this is anonymous. It doesn't matter who you are. I, I'm not gonna be able to see who you are, but go ahead and do your best. Where do the electrons in the electron transport chain in photosynthesis come from? So let's go ahead and fill that out. See if we can get everyone answering. So I've got 32 of you that have answered. I guess we're going to find out if anybody's got Zoom on but is off somewhere else now, huh? <laughs> 41, 42, getting closer. Still have about 10 more people left to answer.
Still got seven of so, you left. Dr. Sowell. Yeah. When you uh, enter, I lost, I lost my poll window. When I click on my poll, it just go it, like it just disappears. It doesn't let me submit it. Is it okay. submitting it? I, I have no idea. Um, and honestly, for the exercise this morning, it's not too important. We're not using polling to collect any grading material or anything um, this week. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. Okay. That's the least of our IT issues right now. <laughs> okay, look, looks like I've got just about everyone. I'm going to end polling and I'm going to share the results with you. So you should be able to see what we all selected here. So let's look at this and let's break this down. Uh, so there were six options here. And so if you divide 100% by six, that means if we just randomly rolled a dice and these were numbers one through six, we should get about 17% on each of them. And so you guys kind of looked at carbon dioxide and threw that out. It wasn't, it was the one thing here not mentioned anywhere in the video. Everything else was mentioned somewhere in the video. Water was the correct answer. They went over that at the beginning and then they literally showed two water molecules hitting that weird little three nubby thing, uh, the oxygen evolving complex OEC. They didn't label it in this diagram, but they showed it hitting that dozens and dozens of times and splitting and those electrons coming off. So we watched a two minute video and this is something you've already been exposed to, right? You guys all got this in botany. Uh, hopefully many of you got this in high school as well. And only a third of the class got the right answer. And I wanna point out, even if I had not shown you the video and I had asked you this question and everything was gibberish, I had typed random letters into every box, we would still expect 17% of you to have guessed this option down here, okay? So when we look at this, if I subtract 17% out from that 33%, it's likely that only about 16% of you, so that's gonna be about one in six of you got the correct answer from watching that video. Uh, the other 17% likely picked it just randomly guessing, right? Um, and then the majority of the class two thirds picked the incorrect answer. And so here's the take home message from that. Let me stop sharing the results. Um, watching the video, and again, because of the format we're on this semester, we've had to set up most of this course in videos, but watching a video is not learning, okay? Let me get share screen working for you so we can look at the rest of this. And so you really have to keep that in mind. And so you can sit here and you can go through every video in the course. You can watch every second of every video in the course this whole time. And you're, you may walk away from that having learned very little. So you've wasted your time, you've wasted your money. You haven't really gotten uh, what we want out of the course, right? So here's the same question for you again. So there's a few reasons for that, okay? One of them is overconfidence bias. And so this is a natural tendency we all have where you watch a video and at the end of the video, if we asked you, hey, do you understand that? Many of you might've said no for that. That was a complex video. Many of our videos in this course will be stuff that uh, you're probably better suited to learn about ecology. It's not the detailed biochemical pathway like that. But still, you, you would walk out of watching a video and say, oh yeah, I, I understand that. And then we would ask you to teach it to someone else or we would ask you a quiz question like I just did or something like that. And you would be like, uh, I, I don't know what that is. And so overconfidence bias just means that, you know, you watch something, you're like, oh yeah, I got that. You don't got it, okay? So watching a video is not understanding. And so here's, here's a good example of overconfidence bias. We're gonna see a number of chihuahuas this week. So here's another one for you. Uh, he thinks he's got that bone, he doesn't. Um, so watching a video is not understanding, okay? So as you're going through the course, keep that in mind. Watching the video is not understanding. And so let's, let's think about how we can do this so that we do learn from these videos. Because if we don't do this, you're wasting your time. You're gonna have a rough time when you get to forestry 347 silviculture. You're gonna have a rough time in management plans. You need the content from this course to succeed in later courses. And you need the content from this course in your career. Again, almost all the guest speakers we brought in for you this week are SFA alumni, and they're all out there practicing this in their day-to-day -day jobs. So this is important stuff. We want you to actually learn it. So here's what you need to do. We've got all these videos. Take notes. And if you've got access to paper, take notes on paper, okay? That's making you engage in the content. Dr. Oswald and I worked with Sarah Fuller and we made you six and a half hours of video. I'm recording this right now. So over the course of this week, we're probably gonna make you another half hour and a half worth of content. 
two and a half hours worth of content. And then I haven't tallied it up yet, but we probably have brought in other videos from outside totaling another three or four hours. So you may be watching about 10 hours of video across this whole week. So two hours of video a day. When you take notes, you're not trying to memorize all 10 hours of video, okay? Um, you know, hopefully no one in this group can go and uh, quote us word for word the entire Lord of the Rings series. Um, if you can, you know, good for you. Um, but, you know, that's about 10 hours of video. So you're not trying to memorize every little thing. So when you take notes, keep that in mind. You want to get the big take home messages from this course and that understanding. So one advantage of taking notes, writing them out by hand rather than typing them into a word processor is that when you type into a word processor, you tend to transcribe. You tend to write down, this is what was said, then this, then this, then this. So you're just basically typing out captions for the video almost. If you can't type that fast, you're not doing quite as good a job, but you're really trying to transcribe. When you take notes by hand, most of us cannot write that fast. And so it forces you to synthesize, sorry, synthesize and summarize the important points it causes you to write this in a structure. You start categorizing things. You start doing little doodles. It may help you understand things. And so focus on synthesizing and summarizing your note taking, not on transcribing, because that's causing you to think about the video. It's causing you to look at this and say, I don't have to memorize all of this. What are the important points? And just the act of you making the decision of what the important points are, that's gonna help you actually learn the content. Now with the 3D videos, the 3D videos, what I, I would advise is, and, and you know, I've been through this too. I've been trying to type out questions for you all while I watch these videos. And so when I find myself doing that with the 3D videos, I'm just typing the questions and I'm having to think about what are the important points in this video that I wanna ask you questions about. And I realized I didn't explore the 3D videos. So when you're in these 3D videos, my advice to you would be put down your pencil, grab your mouse, and just explore the 3D video, move around in the stand, look at everything in the stand, try to get the experience of that stand as best you can. In a normal week of field silviculture, what we tell you is you're trying to build up a series of stands that you have a mental picture of. That's what the stand description exercise is intended to do here to get you actually out in the woods. But I think these 3D videos can do a decent job of that as well. So that later on, when you're in your career or you're in management plans, you can go into a forest, you can look around and you can say, this is just like that stand we watched that 3D video on in North Carolina, or this is just like that stand I visited for my second stand description in field silviculture. And it's not just this class, it's stands that you all are going out to on on work, internships, other classes, start building up kind of a mental series of stands that you've got so that you can say, hey, this is like this stand. What did they do in that stand? And maybe something similar will work. So explore the 3D video so you can start getting the mental picture of these stands. And then when the 3D video is over, none of them are more than five minutes. Pause it, go start taking notes. And if there was something you missed, you were like, this was important, but I don't quite remember what it is. You've got the video there. It was about the two minute mark. Go back to the two minute mark, go look at that. Oh, that's what it was. And get your notes set up so you're happy with your notes. And again, the intent on these notes, draw the important points out. Don't write down every little thing. So that's gonna help you a lot. Now I said I was writing questions for these videos. Here's the other way I've structured this. So you guys have you know, logged on to D2L this morning and you may have seen that number on the table of contents. Oh crap, I've got to look at 286 different videos. It's not that bad. One reason it's not that bad is I've created a self-assessment for almost all the videos. For some of the 3D video tours, it comes every third or fourth video. For some of the other ones, there's one on every single video. And so here's what the self-assessment is. You get into it and after the video is complete, you go to the self-assessment. It is structured as a short answer quiz, but the self-assessments will not be graded. Um, I will not be seeing the answers you enter into the self-assessment, no one will. It's there purely as a learning tool for you. So it asks you a short answer question. There's a blank where you can type in your answer to that short answer question. And then right under that, there's a little uh, drop down that says check my answer. Well, if you click check my answer, what it then gives you is the answer I have typed in for that question. Okay, so you could go into every self assessment and you could just click my answers, you could look at them. But again, that's like watching the video and not paying attention. That's not going to get you to learn anything. 
So you have to use these self-assessments the right way also. The goal isn't just to complete every one. The goal is to actually learn from it. You have to put learning first here, like Dr. Oswald's signature line says. So when you look at that on the self-assessment, read the question, do your best to answer it straightforwardly, okay? Um, I wouldn't necessarily advise you to go back to the video and try and find that exact answer in there. You're going to waste a lot of time doing that because you do have the answer right under there. If you're like, I have no clue, you can check and look at the answer, but that tells you that's something you need to focus on a little bit more. Some of the self-assessments, you're going to look at that and you'll be like, I didn't hear that in the video. A few of the self-assessments, what I'm using them for, I'm adding information to the video. And so in some of those, I'm putting something in there. Um, just additional information that helps you provide more context to the video. Some of the answers in the self-assessments you will find in the video, but then I can clarify them or put them more in context for you. So the videos in combination with the self-assessments are really set up as a package to help you uh, actively learn and engage uh, with the course content so you actually get the take-home messages we're trying to give you. The other thing we've done here to help you out is we've chunked the videos, okay? Um, and so, you know, good pedagogical practice. I've used a reference to a movie that aired before most of you were born. Um, if you don't know who that is, look up Chunk and Goonies. Okay, this isn't what chunking is. This is what chunking is. We had a 31 minute Mindland Reclamation tour, okay? We all just saw you watched a two minute video and didn't, you know, learn everything about it. There's no way you can watch a 30 minute video, take notes. You're going to burn out on that if we try to do that over and over and over again. So with all the videos, I've chunked them up into little pieces uh, that probably average four minutes in length across the course. It varies from a couple minutes to, you know, there's a few of them 10 or 12 minutes long, but I've broken them up into little more manageable pieces. Um, and so that's the second reason that that 286 or whatever number on the top of that table of contents was so large. This 30 minute video may have been split up into six parts and those six parts may each have a self assessment on them. So this one 30 minute video is showing up as 12 activities in the table of contents number. So don't panic when you see pine silver plantation silver culture at 85 any of those that's a product of chunking and self assessments. And so what this enables you to do I've tried to use logical breakpoints so it's going to help you organize what you're learning. But the other thing you can do is you're doing all this. Again, focus on learning first. If you watch the first three portions of this and you're like, man, I'm burning out, get up, walk around, go do something else for five or 10 minutes, you know, shift gears a little, sit back down and then start on the next ones. So do your best not to just burn them out. Again, the intent is not to go through every single video. The intent is to learn from every single video. So keep that in mind. And along those lines, you're not a sponge. Okay, this is not how learning works. You're not going to watch all these videos and instantly know all this stuff. So keep that in mind. Um, a better analogy for folks who aren't an expert, this, this is what it looks like when you're learning from any course or when you're learning anything right now when you're not an expert. Each of these little pieces of paper or whatever in this office is a piece of information. You get that new piece of information, you throw it in here somewhere. This is what it feels like when you're in school. This is what it feels like when you're in grad school, okay? You're taking in a lot of information and someone asks you to synthesize it or put it together and you're like, well, which pieces do I need? I don't know, I've thrown them into all these different places in my brain. I haven't really connected this over here with that back over there. By the time you become an expert and you don't need a PhD to be an expert, you just need to engage with content repeatedly for a long time with lots of experiences. So you can become an expert at your field just as, you know, with a bachelor's degree. If you work for 10, 20 years, you can get to the point where now what you do, you've built this filing cabinet. You've formed contexts in your brain so that you know how all these different things interrelate. So when a new piece of paper comes in, you put it in the right spot, which means it's much easier for you to recall it later. And it's much easier for you to fit it into the big picture. So when I'm done talking about how we're learning from this on, online course, I'm going to give you an introduction to silviculture here. And one of the major intents of that introduction for this whole week is to help you start building this file cabinet related to silviculture so that all this information, and it is a lot of information that's coming in, it helps you organize it so that you can actually learn from it. So you've got to engage in these videos this week, even though there may be a lot of videos, You've got to be active. You've got to take good notes. You've got to try and use your notes to organize. 
when you go to study for the quiz, we've got a quiz this afternoon on the Pine module at 4.30. If you've taken good handwritten notes today, you put those away. These quizzes are closed note, put them away. But just the act of taking those notes in the 10, 20 minutes before the video, you can look at them, you can study them. You're not gonna be able to go back through all the video we've posted, but you can go back through your notes. That gives you another opportunity to make these connections and really start learning the material, okay? So learning online is probably a little different than learning face-to-face. -face. Some of this really applies more to learning online, but some of these are good tips to use in your general courses too. And honestly, I already talked about how you're gonna learn more about pole mills doing this than walking through a real pole mill. There's other advantages to learning online. I've sort of figured out putting all this together. So here's William Moncrief. We're sitting out in a clear cut here at a normal field station. And he spends probably an hour talking to us about how they make their prescriptions, all the treatments they prescribe, and you sit here in the sun and you cook and you take notes and you've got chiggers running up your legs and fire ants. And, you know, in the prescription activity in the afternoon, you know, it's hit or miss on whether they've learned much in this format. You're going to be able to sit inside, hopefully in air conditioning. We've got uh, William Moncrief giving his presentation with a PowerPoint. So now you've got pictures, you've got the text there for you that you don't have in this face-to-face -face format. Uh, you've got drone video of some of the treatments. You've got pictures of the equipment he's talking about. And so honestly, I kind of feel like you're probably going to learn more about what FRC does for establishment silviculture in this format than you might actually doing it out in the field. You don't get to go see a cool waterfall. That's the downside. But I think you may actually learn more this way. So, and again, we're going to have a lot more chihuahuas in this format than you do see in a normal field station. So, okay. Any questions on online learning, how you use the course. Okay, if there's no questions with that, again, I'm trying to chunk these lectures just like I chunked the video content here uh, so we can all focus on them. Let, let's take another brief uh, five minute break, be back here at say 9.08. Um, and then I've got an hour or less lecture for you introducing you to uh, silviculture. So I'll hang around during this break if anyone's got any questions.